Hi friends, it's actor and singer Laura Osnes here and you're watching The Libby O Show. How did she do it? Do it. Hello everybody, Libio here with a brand new episode of The Libio Show. I have two-time Tony Award nominee, Broadway star, Miss Laura Osnes on the show today. She is a good friend. And this happens to be the two-year anniversary today of when you moved to Nashville. It is indeed. What a great crazy? way to celebrate. Yes, cheers, friends. <laughs> cheers. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm so glad mm, that you're here, that you're here in Nashville, and we get to talk about your recent songwriting endeavors with your new songs that yes. you've put out over the past two years. You have a brand new holiday movie coming out on Great American Family called Dash of Christmas, yes. which we just made an amazing cocktail um, in honor of this new project. But first, how are you? Libby, I'm so good. <laughs> so like, glad you're here. Thank you so much for having me on the show. I've been looking forward to this day for a really long time. Me too. I'm just, I'm delighted and I just love you. I love the show. Thank you for like preparing for this so beautifully. And thank you. I love your outfit. You look amazing. <laughs> you do too. I thank love you. the velvet. Perfect. Perfect texture. Yeah. Um, and special thanks also to Fallon and Hotel Frey for allowing us uh, to shoot in this beautiful space. Unreal. Um, I love here it. in Nashville. We can see all of this uh, Nashville skyline. Uh, right in front of us. But let's get to Christmas first. Great. Because who doesn't love Christmas? Who doesn't love celebrating the holidays? Dash of Christmas is coming out this holiday season on Great American Family. What is something that most people don't know uh, when it comes to filming a Hallmark movie? Okay. What are some things they need to know? I think these Christmas movies are all filmed so quickly. We filmed A Dash of Christmas in 12 days. So it was... Uh, two six-day weeks. We only had one day off a week. Mm -hmm. And our shooting schedule was such that every day was a 3 p.m. to 3 a.m. day. So we had all night shoots for those 12 days. We're going till 3 or 4 in the morning. My body got on a completely different schedule of being able to work at night. I slept for like probably five or six hours as it was yeah. starting to get bright outside. Um, but it's fast and furious, and it's kind of all hands on deck, very collaborative effort to make these movies come together because they film so, so quickly. It's also usually summer when you film them. Yeah. So I filmed, we, we shot Dash of Christmas in Winnipeg in wow. June. Okay. And so it's like, you know, at least it was Winnipeg, it's northern Canada, or southern Canada, um, but it's, you know, 85 degrees every day, and you're wearing heavy coats and scarves and, that's and sweaters. And it's snowing. For sure, <laughs> exactly. So a lot of the a lot of times the snow is fake. It's either um, digitized and and added in after the fact, or like fake little cotton mm -hmm. you know, snow that they put in the windows and things like that. So um, those are kind of the fun little behind the scenes tidbits. What was something about the storyline of this film that you resonated with as an actress? Something about it that was just very memorable for you. Maybe reminded you of what it was like to celebrate Christmas. Yes. As, as a kid. This was so cute because I got to bake, and I actually really oh. love to bake. Um, it's one of Laura's favorite hobbies and things to do. And so, you know, there's so many scenes where we're like decorating cookies, and the the guy I fall in love with in the movie owns the town bakery. Surprise, surprise! And he has to teach me how to bake and and cook. And so it was really fun. We got to like taste some things and like we're getting to do today yes. we didn't quite make cocktails unfortunately but we made a lot of desserts and and goodies and treats and um that was really fun and i think like one of my there was one scene where i i have to be bad at baking because he teaches me how you know so um we just got to play around and i got to like spill things everywhere and like get all flowery and um it was fun. we laughed a lot it was really fun what do you like to cook during Christmas? What is something that you and your, your husband, Nate, like to... One of my favorites, I think, like, a traditional dish in my family is, like, a sweet potato casserole my grandma always used to make. I have, so a, I have a sweet tooth, so I, I'll take the kind with the toasted marshmallows on top. Perfection. But my grandma's recipe used to have, like, a crunchy, like, um, almost kind of oatmeal brown sugar, like, Graham crust. cracker. Yeah. yeah, like a crust thing on top that was so good. Um, 
My husband is an amazing cook and chef, so I'm very lucky that uh, that really is his alley. And I always, I bake the desserts. I've, I've done pumpkin pie, I love an apple crisp. Um, we do this like baked brie wheel that has like cranberries and apples. That's really good for Thanksgiving and Christmas. So um, mm. we're all about the food all the time. All about the food. <laughs> That's what I love about Christmas too. That's exactly. so, so great. What's your favorite Christmas movie? Ooh, I really love The Holiday. Oh, You know The yeah. Holiday, right? Yeah, The Holiday's awesome. I recently watched it. I hadn't seen it in years, and I watched it again last year. It was on TV, and I was reminded what a great film it is, so highly recommend. Yeah. And then um, I have a tradition of watching Polar Express with my nephews. Okay. I feel like there are some people that, like, they're like, oh, I kind of like that, but, like, they're, they're like, oh, it's animated or whatever. I'm obsessed with are you good? With the, so I'm so happy to hear that. <laughs> I, um, I feel like it is kind of hot and cold with people. But people are like, oh, it's like kind of eerie and it creepy. Is. And I'm like, but it's mysterious and like kind of, you don't really, you don't really know what's happening. There's an uncertainty to it, which is what Christmas right? is kind of, it's the magic of Christmas, you know? Exactly. I think it's, what's cool about it is that it's good for the kids and also yeah. has, it's good for the grownups. That it's like, it does mm -hmm. kind of span a multi-generational um Kind of demographic with the way that it's done but the animation style is unique but it it's feels like unique. the pictures if you go back to the book it's like the pictures from the book have come to life which is i think very cool and nostalgic and the sound yes like the one scene i always remember is when they're in i guess it's santa's i don't know if it's like a workshop factory because it's just like massive but they're playing an old like frank oh sinatra song like yeah but it's from afar and it's yeah it's on a vinyl or whatever and yes. I, just lo I just love that moment I i'm so know. glad you mentioned that because i think i've i don't think i ever would have quite put my finger on noticing that now when i watch it this christmas you're I gonna will. hear it <laughs> <laughs> i love it that's awesome it, um it's a wonderful life is my go-to oh it's so i good. feel like i mean do you cry every time i do well, well yeah i basically cry every time my husband's is holiday uh not holiday and white christmas which yes. I did not call it. Holiday Inn's great too, though. It is. It totally is. Because <laughs> it's all holidays all year. Um, and then the original Santa Claus from the 90s with yes. like Tim Allen. That's oh, like yes. a really great one. So. Oh my gosh. I grew up with the Grinch. My dad really loved the Grinch. The, oh yeah, the Tim Allen Santa Claus. I think I've only seen that once. I might have to break that one out again this Christmas. Yeah. We're going to have to like uh, do a Christmas movie dawn. I love it. And That's we'll start with a dash of Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> start there first to right. celebrate. And then we'll just do one all of the other iconic favorites. <laughs> you've obviously, you've worked on this film this past year. Yes. And then you've also been working on music yes. as well. Uh, you released On the Other Side Part 1 in 2022. And then a couple singles this year. So talk about that process. It's, it's something new that you've been exploring. And you do such an amazing job. So I'm Thank just you. really proud of you and happy for you. And so... Talk about what that was like. Thank you, Libby. Um, songwriting is so vulnerable. It's sharing a piece of yourself and your yeah. heart in a way that I had never done before. I grew up on stage doing theater on Broadway and becoming an expert at bringing someone else's work to life and breathing life into that. And for the first time, I thought maybe I have something to say. Um, and maybe I have something to write about and I can still use my gifts and my voice to be able to tell stories in this new way. And so it was very scary for me at first songwriting. I, I've, I've never done it before. So trying something new, I felt like an old dog trying to learn a new trick, but I was, I was paired up with some really wonderful collaborators who were very kind and held my hand and helped kind of show me the ropes. Um, and it's been a very rewarding, uh, vulnerable, as I said, but, fulfilling and hopefully continually fruitful act of creativity. <laughs> and yeah. I think I've had to let go of any expectations. Um, again, like as an actor, as a performer, it's like we like applause, right? We like attention, we like that affirmation. And the last couple of years, I've just, I've learned to kind of get rid of that and just create for the sake of creating. And there's so many people out there trying to make music and trying to tell their story. And I, I wasn't, it felt like my purpose in making music was actually kind of for me to begin to heal and for me to tell my story more so than like become a famous songwriter on yeah, tour. Yeah, it's cathartic <laughs> for you, you know? Yes, for sure. And so I released an EP exactly a year ago and it's called... We're celebrating so many milestones today. So many. That's insane. Like I, I moved to Nashville two years ago today. I released my EP 
a year a year ago in like two more days. So when my so EP came out, we were like, I ba it's basically my one year anniversary of being here. So Aww. yeah, there's so much. And That's the Shiners, so Shiner, we'll, t we'll, we'll talk about Sh Shiners I actually in a remember, yeah, because I went to the very first, like the opening night and it was around this time last it year. It was indeed. So we're celebrating our one year anniversary so of Shiners this Thursday. So it's a circle. big week. <laughs> so much for a uh, full circle moment. So moments. much to celebrate. Um, but yeah, Getaway is 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 the is the single that you released. And then also Enough is another one yes. that you put out. So I had a five track EP yeah. um, that came out last year, a year ago, about um, a very kind of difficult experience right. I went through. Um, I, and we can talk about that for a second too. I lived in New York City, did Broadway for 15 years. Obviously the pandemic had a big effect on my industry and on New York City as a whole. And um, two years ago, I, I kind of had a hard exit with New York and had a bout with cancel culture and um, was kind of exiled from the community that I thought I knew and loved and yeah. the career that I had put a lot of my identity in. And I had to kind of learn that lesson of who am I without that? Do I still have value? Do I still have worth? What else am I, am I good at? Because um, that's all, kind of all I had done for so many years. And it, that whole going through that whole painful process landed us in Nashville. And honestly, now two years later, I am, I'm so grateful. Like it's honestly, I think the best, like worst thing that could have happened. I found you, I yeah. found a whole new community of people and of artists that had very similar stories to me. I think I felt very alone in New York um, just for some of the views and the values that I had. And I have found people here that are like-minded, like-hearted, like-spirited. And there's also just a respect um, for differing views I feel like here in Nashville. Yeah. And it's sad that the world became so polarized over so many of the kind of political, spiritual, medical, uh, all the medical, things. all of the things, all of those issues, um, the last couple years. And so, um, I, that's what my EP is about. My EP is called on the other side and it's about kind of going through cancel culture and coming out the other side. And now like I can say there is, there is life on the other side of it, and I love it here in Nashville. I've been so grateful to be here and explore new vehicles of creativity, things that, like songwriting, things I never would have considered because musical theater really was my, my whole world. It's all I had ever really done. And so I'm in this cool season of expanding and growing, trying new things, learning fortitude and standing in the face of adversity and yeah. coming out the other side. And those seasons are always hard. I mean, in oh, the moment sure. you're thinking, why does why is this the most difficult? And I don't know. Like, I don't think anybody likes to be blindsided. No. You know? And I feel like that's kind of what happened with you. Is you know, yeah. you. I mean, can you t can you share just a little bit of what happened? I mean, yeah, yeah. So I was never really outspoken about um, any of the views I had. Like, I am a, a person of faith. Mm -hmm. I grew up a Christian, and so I think people knew that that was something that was important to me, but. I never felt like I forced it on other people or even really right, talked right. about it that much. Um, and what what I was kind of outed for in that time in the New York Post was for being unvaccinated. And at the time, that was a view that my community could not accept. Yeah. And no one was willing to have a conversation about it. There was no nuance about it. I never um, said anything about it. I didn't take any sort of public stance or I wasn't posting any, any of that stuff, um, right. but that was a time when silence was considered violence by that right. community and uh, someone caught wind and there was an article in the New York Post that um, essentially kind of blindsided claimed, you and, yes, right. and, and said all these things um, about me having to lose a job because I was unvaccinated, saying that I was fired and there were some other untruths in the article about what actually happened and I actually crafted a response uh, like that I put out a couple days later kind of telling the truth about what happened and it actually only made things worse which I think I knew was going to happen but I felt like I was standing for truth and for what I believed and knew was right and um, I, it's it was so painful but also worth the sacrifice because I feel like I was I was doing the right thing for me at that time and mm -hmm. I think you really realize a lot of true colors in people came out and 
I think I, I question too, like is anybody else willing to stand up for what they know is true or willing to sacrifice for what they believe? And I feel like so many people the last couple of years weren't, didn't, and that's okay. I have absolutely no judgment toward anyone that has differing views than me, but it's made me find my people which is, again, the, the beauty that has come from the ashes. Yeah, and I mean, there's just something, I mean, I can speak to this, of finding just really I don't know, genuine alignment in your life in a lot of areas. And I think that it's easy, especially like, you know, I lived here for, I've lived here for almost 14 years. Wow. And so... You started the trend, Libby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, feel like a native. But yeah, I mean, I think there's so much bravery that comes with going through a season like that. Um, so, you know, in hindsight... Going through that season, what was the hardest thing about building back trust when you hmm. felt like there were some people that you thought would publicly defend you? Um, and how did you see God redeem that season for you? Yeah. So be able to trust God that he could kind of really funnel like, hey, this is the direction, this is the community that I want, want you to, to be a part of as a result of what unfortunately is happening? That's a great question. I think it took me like a year, yeah. to be honest. I was I was very kind of depressed and anxious and so insecure and so vulnerable um, that really when I got here, I anybody that wanted to be my friend, just because I had lost so many, I just, I gravitated towards it. I was like, oh, uh, some kindness, some humanity. <laughs> um, and I feel like that's what really helped my husband, Nate, and I get plugged in here. And what God did is what he, <laughs> which I still am astounded by, is that he brought people into our life who had gone through similar things. Right. And who were in similar positions, either ostracized from their community over very similar issues, maybe not the exact same story. Um, and a lot of them artists, to be honest, because the artist community was one that kind of only allowed one school of one thought. narrative yeah yes and one narrative and so my husband and I were like I we keep meeting all of these creative artistic people who don't have a place anymore in the world that they thought they belonged in um, and we actually started like an artist kind of underground like group here which you became a part of is yes. kind of how we met through a mutual friend like on accident kind of yes and the um, whole thing was a little bit on accident it, it, the whole thing was a little bit on accident, and I feel like for myself, I was going through a variety of changes at one time, and I and maybe that you know resulted in me want, wanting even more change or craving that, and so you know when, once I met you all and got to really know what you're all about, that made me feel like I was turning a new leaf in some ways that I didn't know I needed. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And I feel like we all needed a place to belong, and we all for a while just needed. <laughs> It was almost like therapy yeah. of going like, I just need to share my story and I need to cry to people who have, who get it and who have been through a similar thing. And it was so healing for so many people because I think all of our hearts were like in the depths yeah. when we found each other. And over the last year and a half, we also just celebrated that one, our one year of that, of that group kind of coming together. And over the last year, people's hearts have begun to flourish again because because they just, they've been healed. And we're now creative, other creative out things and outlets and vehicles and opportunities are beginning to flow again. And I think people, um, it's just an exciting time. Still a lot of unknowns. And still like kind of tiptoeing It's forward. a lot of new and I feel like a lot of things have, have shifted and it's been interesting to navigate, but for sure, it's still been beautiful at the same time. And I mean, people always say that spring is for flourishing. I think fall is for flourishing. I think fall is the flourish season. I agree. <laughs> I agree. And it is. You're totally right. It's, you know? We're in this cool, like, or like the leaves are changing. You know what I mean? Yeah, it yeah. feels like that, where it's like, and it's becoming beautiful. Um, it's like spring kind of already happened, but now it's like we're growing, we're maturing, and what we're called to do here two years in. Mm -hmm. And I'm really, I'm actually, I am excited. For one of the first times, I'm like full of hope for what's to come and what God has for my husband and I here creatively, but also what our community is beginning to do. It's a lot of professionals from their different, fields. Different areas and different backgrounds. I mean, everyone yes. has a unique background in what they've been doing. And it's also been, you know, journeys for them where they've done a lot of different things. They're yeah. not subscribing just to one creative 
purpose, pursuit, you know? Yes, it's actors, it's musicians, it's a, a makeup artist, it's a, um, a comedian, a drummer, a, like all kinds, a producer, a couple yeah. of producer types. Um, it's been, re again, really, really kind of exciting and cool that um, I feel like we're, we're being called to create and build some of our own systems outside of the mecha systems that exist on the coast. And Nashville's moving and shaking. And I'm excited yeah. to be a part of it. Me too. We've talked about, you know, you moving to Nashville and just kind of what that's, that's meant to you. But we haven't really touched on more of those, you know, creative opportunities that you've really immersed yourself into. Uh, so Shiners is one of them. Oh, yes. And then you're writing a script uh, with our good friend Stephanie. Yes. And you've supported the new Oxford movie that just came Surprise out. My Oxford. So Surprise good. My Oxford. Um, so talk about that. How has this felt to be able to go full on into collaborating uh, the Shiners community? Yes. Yeah. Shiners has been the most beautiful new creative home and family for me. Um, I auditioned for Shiners like six months after moving here, so things were very wow. fresh and new. Um, and I was kind of, my name was put in the hat. They were seeking a, a singer and um, Chuck Wicks, who is my co-star in the show and uh, essentially the, cre the creator mm -hmm. of, of the show, um, just like kind of took me under his wing and was like, hey, we'd love to offer you this role. And by the way, I know your story and it makes me want you in my show even more. And if you ever face heat from anything on our end, I'm here for you, I'll defend you. And like, I literally had no friends that did that for me yeah. in New York. And so I felt that, that place of belonging, that home. And um, it's, it, was, it was the exact thing I needed to just kind of get my confidence back about even being on stage in the first place with people who I knew were going to be loving and welcoming and kind and supportive. Um, and it's been so fun. So it's been a year of that. And the show is, Shiners is a brand new, to Nashville, kind of Las Vegas style, Cirque du Soleil, nightlife comedy, musical variety show. It's a lot going on. There's so much going on. <laughs> like you have to kind of come and see it to believe it. Yeah. It's, um, it's a little raunchy, um, but it's, it's been, uh, my character is kind of the heart of the show. She kind of brings everyone together. I get to sing a gorgeous song at the end of the, of the show. Mm -hmm. It's called Shine, if you can believe it. And um, it's just been a really special experience. I love the people. I love going to work every day. It's only three shows a week, so there's like balance to my life now. Like in New York, it was eight shows a week all the time. My life revolved around that. Every morning I'm waking up, like, is my voice there? Right. You know, that kind of life of like anxiety and pressure. And this is like, it's easy. It's so fun. I love the people. So it's just been um, such a gift. Brave. Well, I feel like what I've witnessed has been very, very brave, and it's inspired me, and I just want to thank you for that, because there's not a lot of people that, you know, it's, you can say, like, that you've gone through a really hard time, but to really see somebody come out of it and to still be showing up, like, that's just not common. I feel like it's not common, and I think that it means probably more to people than you think it really. Thank you. Think, think it does. Thank so. you for saying that. It's, yeah. defi it's definitely been a journey, but like again, the community of people that we've met here have really helped foster that and like pick me back up off the floor and move on. It's been a gift. We're really grateful. Well, you have another original coming close to the new year. Yes. New original song. Uh, talk about that and tell us, tell us uh, what we can expect. Yeah, so the next song that I'm planning to come out with, probably in the new year, we're recording it early November, um, it's called Technicolor, and it's all about how when this horrible thing happened, yeah. like all of my memories from my 14 years in New York City like turned black and white, and suddenly it's like the whole experience of that dream coming true was like tainted and ruined. Um, and the song is about like essentially taking those memories off the shelf again and beginning to see them in color again and like or longing to see them in color because for literally that especially that first year as I said was so kind of depressing for me like I I threw the entire I was like well what was that even good for why were those years even worth it did I even have an impact and anything related to Broadway hurt me it hurt my heart and talking about it hurt my heart 
And so um, I feel like now I'm beginning to like see a photo from Cinderella, for example, and go like, wait, that was good, right? Like that was magical. I, I was happy at that time. time. Yeah. Yes, and I did make an impact while I was there, right? Like. And so, yeah, the song is about like revisiting those memories and longing for the day that I can see them all in color again. Because, you know, you go through any hard experience, a breakup even, and then it's like, oh, I never want to love again. <laughs> because you go through a hurtful experience, it almost, it scars you. And even if you forgive, it's hard to forget. And um, yeah, essentially it's, it's about that healing process of beginning to remember things positively instead mm -hmm. of having all of those years be yeah ruined by one painful experience yeah it's easy to look back and think oh that that place or that time was you know tainted by what maybe what you went through but i think that yeah. that's natural that's human to feel yeah. that um and i think that that's really vulnerable and again courageous for you to to put a song out like out like that that i bet a lot of people are experiencing i mean you know the pandemic i feel like brought a lot of loss to people's careers sure. their their families and you know, for so sure. this is a universal message. I feel like uh, that you could be sharing. I'm, I'm hoping so. I, and it's um, it's a really cool song. It's it's I, I like it. I like it a lot, and I'm excited to get it put out in the world yeah. in the new year. Yes. Can't wait. Speaking of uh, projects that resonate with you, Roger and Hammerstein's Cinderella, which I loved watching the one from the '60s. Oh right, yeah. Leslie Ann Warren. Uh, that came up on Hulu the other day, just out of nowhere, and I was like, how? Have I forgotten about this It's classic. magical. It is so magical. And it was originally made with Julie Andrews, who is like my idol. So You know it was her yeah. birthday yesterday? No. Actually, yes, I saw it. Because I posted post about Mary Poppins, which we're also going to talk about. Yes. This is just Julie Andrews. Full Queen. on Hallmark Disney uh, day here on the show. But Brilliant. you're working on a brand new docuseries that kind of follows that same story. Yes. Talk about that. Uh, it, it, you know, support uh, Backlight Productions, which, you know, it's allows. Uh, those with special needs to share their creative talent. Yes, it is Backlight Productions, and it's a local theater in Franklin, Tennessee, that shines the spotlight on adults with special needs and disabilities. And I was connected with them because they're celebrating their 10-year anniversary of opening, and they actually, the first show they ever did was Cinderella, way back when. And it's also been 10 years since I did Cinderella on Broadway. There's it's so many, like, you know, you go on Facebook and it's like 10 years ago today. It's We're having a full news feed of that right now. It totally is. It's thing after thing after thing. <laughs> right now, this year, this month. Um, Crazy. And so I got connected with them and um, have been given the amazing opportunity to play the fairy godmother in their production. And I couldn't say no. I thought this is going to be so special. It's my return to the stage to the musical theater stage since everything has happened, um, making new memories with this beautiful story that I got to tell on Broadway, but now 10 years later, and with these incredible individuals who are so, it's so special. The, the experience has been beautiful so far. Um, I'm laughing, I'm crying, you know, here I am walking into this experience thinking like, I'm gonna bring like my professionalism and my, you know, having been Cinderella on Broadway, I'm going to help like inspire all of them. And instead like I'm walking away being inspired. I'm the one walking away being completely changed and transformed by these individuals. And it's so special. The performance is the end of October. And my husband and I thought this is going to be way too special not to, document and these stories need to be told and so we just started a production company <laughs> there we go and you know what next year this will be the year anniversary of you starting a production, production company. company there's this like trend you need, every Boom. year you need to be doing something new yeah it's ha that's the at thing at this time of year yeah it's it's just wild the various momentum and things i felt like god has been breathing on here um, and the new, again, the new outlets of creativity that have been put before us. Um, never thought I would do something like, like this, and I'm thrilled to be partnering with Nate in this endeavor. Um, we hired a director friend who totally captured the vision and came on board, and we have a small team crew of two cameramen and a sound guy that's filming rehearsals and doing interviews with these artists. and. Um, getting to tell their story, again, shining the spotlight on these individuals who never 
who never really get that opportunity, especially in the theater arts, aren't given the chance to play leading roles in a musical. And the show is going to be performed at TPAC, Tennessee Performing Arts Love Center. It. And uh, which is, you know, the biggest theater basically here in Nashville. And I think it's, it's going to be super special. So the goal is that it's a three part, maybe four part, depending on how much content we get, documentary series that will hopefully find a platform next year. Believe a Dream is what it's called, right? Believe the Dream, a Cinderella story. Believe the Dream, a Cinderella story. I love it. I watched the trailers. But yeah. It's, yeah. Can't wait for everybody to see that. Thanks, Libby. It's going to be incredible. <laughs> so we're going to end up actually making a Cinderella cocktail at some point uh, for, for the show. We have like an outfit change. It's a whole thing because I can't do things halfway. No um, way, Jose. But Disney obviously has made an impact in a lot of people's lives. And Mary Poppins happens to be one of my favorite ones. Favorite all-time traditional classic Disney movie. Beautiful. I wanted to be Mary Poppins as a child. Didn't we all? I mean, it just has it together, you know? Um, and you got to perform Jolly Holiday to honor Dick Van Dyke at the Kennedy Center two years ago. Thank and you. let me tell you, I watched that and I'm just like, my eyes are like <laughs> tearing up. I'm like, oh my God, this is so beautiful. Um, talk about that experience, because that was, that was just so cool to see his face light up. It was a pinch me moment. Yeah. Same thing. I mean, I also grew up loving Mary Poppins, and obviously Julie Andrews, like yes. I mentioned earlier. She is my hero. I love The Sound of Music. I loved, she was the original um, Eliza Doolittle in My Fair Lady in the Broadway move, show before the movie right, right. was made. Like, I just, she's been my kind of idol and all be all. And um, she actually announced my name. The voiceover that introduces me to the stage was Julie Andrews. <laughs> and I was like, what is going on? Wow. She's like, please welcome to the stage, Laura Osnes or whatever, you know? And I was I like, I didn't realize that was her. Yes. So I'm freaking out. I walk on and Dick Van Dyke is 15 feet away from me in the front row. And I'm getting to sing It's a Jolly Holiday with you, Bert, directly to his face. And he was beaming. He's like literally beaming. hundred years old. He's hundred and he's I see this is this is my goal in life. To be as to be as joyful. And it's genuine. It is genuine it joy. Is until I'm just yeah, in the dirt. Exactly. That is the <laughs> that's the goal in life. Same, I'm with you. Is to can hold we, on to that. Can we can, can we do that? Can we please? Rocking chairs, just jovial. You we'll and me. have to do. We'll, we'll have to do a skit sometime. <laughs> we'll just be drink. We'll be drinking our margaritas at age ninety eight. All the wrinkles, but just full just smiles. Like we've lived and sparkling eyes. We can talk about how we did this back in the day. Right. Oh. Yeah. He was amazing. I didn't actually. I will be honest and say I didn't actually get to meet him, like face to face, shake a yes. hand, have a conversation moment. Um, you kind of had that when he when you were singing. It was like you were thing. just. I looked him straight in the eye and I got to sing to him for him for this very beautiful moment that was honoring him. And I just felt so grateful and honored to be there that they like chose me to get to celebrate Dick Van Dyke. Like, hello. And I, th I hear he still like works out. Like, honestly, he has his exercises <laughs> that he does every day that like keep him in shape and keep him sprightly and youthful. I don't think he's going anywhere anytime soon. He's, uh, I bet you he's skipping through cobblestone. I think he is. Singing super califragilistic You know he is. You know he is. Yes. Well, your voice is absolutely stunning. I mean, I have to say, like, especially in, in, in that video there, being able to rewatch that, and then also your new music that's out. I mean, you really, yeah, just absolutely phenomenal. So sweet of so. you. Thank you, Libby. Yeah. Appreciate that. Well, cheers to a dash of Christmas. To Cinderella, fairy tale dreams, Disney, all the really fun things in life, and I feel like, I feel like I have to say this. I feel like we really value those joyful moments and memories, especially like from our childhood. You know, while we're going through life and we're experiencing the hard. I think like when you experience the really hard stuff, like going to that place of remembering those simple joys in life and things that make people happy and make them feel like they belong is just. It's so vital and important to our creative work and to what we do. So I completely agree. Yeah. And like my motive for creativity now has completely like 180 degrees like shifted. Like it's not about that New York mentality of like climbing the ladder and right. success, success. And I always was very grateful and appreciative. I never took it for granted. That was my dream come true. But I can look back now and say like, I got to do it. I did six Broadway shows. I spent 15 years there. 
And yes, that was all I ever knew and all I ever wanted. But I'm like, I still have so many years ahead of me. And God is just doing something where it was like, this was your world. But he's like, I actually have all this for you. You just never would have seen it. You never would have considered it had you stayed here. Because I was happy there. I was content there. But it took something so drastic and painful as it was for me to begin to open my eyes and my heart to all of these other things that... Um, that are making an impact. A hundred percent. And I'm, and I'm, it's shifting my entire perspective and what I feel called to do and why I feel called to do it. Well, I'm going to, I believe that he's going to keep using that as he is so. right now. So thanks. Thank you so much for being I love here. So much. I you too. <laughs> do we get to eat now? <laughs> we do get to eat now. Everybody go follow Laura Osnes on Instagram, Facebook. You're, I mean, you're everywhere. Yes. Um, a dash of Christmas on great American family, your new music coming out, all the great things. And I'm so glad you're in Nashville. Thanks, Libby. I'm so yes. glad to be here too and grateful that you're a part of it. Thank Love you. For watching. Thanks Should for having call? me. <laughs> and curtain call. Should we bow? Let's go stand up and this, teach me how to do the, the theater bow. How to, is there a way oh, to do it? Oh, no, I know. But when you're, when you're next to people, it's arms up and down. Yes. I don't, I don't intend, I don't do like the full hair flip. It's just, it's, it's a lot. It can be a lot. Yeah. So I, I did curtsy in Cinderella. This. Oh, it was the hand. Oh, see, I've been doing it wrong all these all this time. There's a lot longer. Oh yeah, no behind. Oh, hand. No, yes. No. This is gonna test yes. my balance. How do you go in front? Oh, I've never done that. This is what happens when you're <laughs> in okay, getting we're over. done. We're done. <laughs> see you guys. Make Bye. sure that you are <laughs> subscribed to the Libio Show everywhere. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And uh, we'll see you guys soon. Take care. Libio Show. The Living Up Show It's the Living Up Show